Our topic today is about aircraft's directional stability. We're still in the area of static stability. Directional stability uh, is concerned with the static stability of an aircraft about the z-axis. Uh, directional stability is also called the weathercock stability uh, because its characteristics are the same as this weathercock. Uh, this weathercock has an arrow uh, that will always point towards the direction of the wind. Wherever the relative wind is coming from, the weathercock will always turn towards that direction. So it will be the same for our aircraft that demonstrates the uh, directional stability. The aircraft will always want to point its nose into the direction of the relative wind. The moment about the aircraft's z-axis is called the yawing moment. And this angle uh, between the aircraft's center line and the relative wind is called the side slip angle, theta. Uh, if the aircraft is in equilibrium or if it's in trim condition in yaw, it would mean that its side slip angle is zero and its yawing moment is zero. So whenever we have the yawing disturbance like this, meaning we have a certain side slip angle here, we would want to reduce this side slip angle to zero by pointing the aircraft's nose toward the direction of the relative wind. The side slip angle um, has positive sign when the relative wind is coming from the right of the nose of the airplane, just like what's shown here. A positive side slip condition is also commonly described as the wind coming in the pilot's right ear. For yawing, Positive yawing is clockwise moment, or when the aircraft turns its nose to the right. So if we have a positive side slip angle where the relative wind is coming from the right, we want the aircraft to have a positive yaw, meaning yaw to the right to go back to trim condition. If we plot the yawing moment coefficient Cn versus the side slip angle beta, we want the slope Cn beta to be positive for static directional stability. Notice here that the trim condition uh, where Cn equals to zero is fixed at beta equals to zero. So the condition for directional static stability is Cn beta greater than zero. Let's look at the contribution of uh, different aircraft components towards the aircraft dynamic stability. So in general, uh, the wing, the fuselage, and the engine that are located forward of the center of gravity. So, for example, this is the aircraft center of gravity, and all of these, um, the, the components, the wing and the engine, are all forward of the CG, uh, would cause a destabilizing motion in directional um, uh, motion. Meanwhile, the vertical tail that is located aft of the center of gravity is stabilizing. This is an equation that describes the sum of all yawing moment coefficient uh, about the aircraft's center of gravity. This equation is written as a function of the side slip angle, beta. And Cn beta here is the directional stability derivative. Uh, the Cn beta um, for the whole of the airplane can be computed by adding up all the Cn beta's contribution from the vertical tail, uh, from the fuselage, and from the wing. We know that the Cn beta um, contribution from the fuselage and from the wing is destabilizing, as um, shown in the previous slide, or the, the Cn beta would have negative sign. Uh, but the total um, uh, Cn beta for the whole of aircraft should be positive if the aircraft has a positive static stability. Um, and this Cn beta is all coming from uh, the vertical tail that has a, a very positive uh, value. So uh, the vertical tail is a primary contributor to the overall aircraft um, directional stability. Now let's take a look at the aircraft's wing fuselage contribution to the aircraft static directional stability. And how do we compute the CM beta contribution from the wing fuselage? The equation that describes CM beta 
contribution from the wing phase sludge is obtained empirically. We've got this equation. It's not from theory. I uh, mean, this equation is approximated based on experiments and observation. Note that there is a negative sign in the equation here. And the rest of these terms are generally positive. So the wing fuselage contribution to directional stability is destabilizing. These empirical terms, um, Kn and Kr, can be found by using this table, which also obtained empirically. They are basically functions of the Reynolds number and the geometry of the wing and the fuselage. Now let's take a look at the vertical tail's contribution towards directional static stability. Uh, we've already talked um, about how the vertical tail stabilizes the aircraft in your disturbance. Here we would like to know how we can properly size that vertical tail uh, such that our aircraft has the right amount of direction, directional stability. So let's derive the equation of the yawing moment produced by the vertical tail. First, uh, note that the angle of attack, as seen by the vertical tail, is influenced by the side slip angle and the side wash angle. It's kind of similar to the down wash angle that we've uh, discussed in pitch motion. Um, uh, the side wash angle describes the flow field distortion due to the wing and the fuselage. Now to compute the yawing moment, first we compute the side force that is acting on the vertical tail and it's expressed as this. We then multiply that by the moment arm of the vertical tail. Here in this equation, Q is the dynamic pressure, uh, S is the surface area of the vertical tail, and L is the arm length from the center of gravity to the vertical tail. Uh, we then would convert the moment equation to yawing moment coefficient equation, which is dimensionless. Um, so then we have the this equation that describes the yawing moment coefficient. Uh, the side wash parameter here can be found through the this empirical equation here, and it is a function of um, the vertical tail's geometry. Uh, another factor that affects the aircraft's directional stability is the placement of the horizontal tail with respect to the vertical tail. Uh, when we move the horizontal tail up or down, uh, the vertical tail's effectiveness to generate that side force um, uh, would be changed. So it depends on where uh, this horizontal tail is mounted on the vertical tail. Um, also, wing sweep. Wings, wing sweep also helps to increase the aircraft's directional stability. Uh, although the effect is uh, small compared to the vertical tail. So an aircraft that has swept back wing has higher directional stability, so it is suitable for high-speed flight. So we can explain how wing sweep helps towards directional stability. Um, by, let's take a look at this diagram. Uh, in your disturbance, if you have, um, we have this nose, it moves out of the relative wind airflow, so we have a certain side slip angle here. The wind that is coming into the relative airflow, this side of wing, uh, would have a higher lift coefficient and higher aspect ratio because of the swept back uh, configuration. So meaning we would have more lift on this wing. Um, uh, more lift would also mean uh, it would generate more drag. So essentially this wing would then drag this nose back into the relative flow. And that's how it contributes towards directional stability. All right, let's uh, let's shift our topic of discussion um, to directional control. Yawing control is achieved by deflecting the rudder. This control surface is located at the vertical tail of the aircraft. And when we deflect the rudder to the left, it will push the aircraft nose to the left. So remember, nose left is negative yawing. Uh, the sign convention that is used in our textbook to describe the rudder deflection is that um, positive rudder deflection is the rudder deflected to the left, like this. So positive rudder deflection would create a negative yawing moment. Um, 
we can size the rudder approximately to get the desired amount of uh, directional control. To do that, we look back into our yawing moment equation, uh, the yawing moment coefficient equation that we have derived before, and we add the term rudder effectiveness, Cn delta r, in the equation. The contribution to the yawing moment coefficient by the rudder deflection um, can be related by this equation. Uh, and it is a function of the tail efficiency, eta, the vertical tail volume ratio, V, and um, this term here, which is essentially the lift curve slope of the vertical tail and the flap effectiveness tau. Um, the size of a vertical tail would affect uh, this parameter, the vertical tail volume ratio. And the size of the rudder on the vertical tail would affect um, this parameter tau, the value of the flap effectiveness. Um, uh, so all of this geometry change um, would affect the yawing moment coefficient. Here's some typical requirement that would uh, determine the amount of rudder control required uh, for an aircraft. Uh, rudder is mostly uh, used for uh, turn coordination. Turn co coordinate, coordinated turn means that the aircraft would point its nose towards the turning direction instead of turning while pointing its nose the other way. Uh, so in this case, to get a turn coordination, both the rudder and the ailerons must be used. Uh, rudder is also used uh, in crosswind landing condition. Um, so a sufficient amount of rudder control um, uh, must be required uh, in, in certain cases of crosswind landing with a certain uh, maximum crosswind speed. Uh, rudder can also be used for control in asymmetric power case. For example, if one of the engine, the aircraft's engine is out, so that leaves just one engine on one wing, that would always make the aircraft yawing to, to one direction. So we can use the rudder to counter uh, that yawing moment from the asymmetric power. Um, rudder is also used for spin recovery. Uh, spin is... Um, it is a. It can be a uh, an, an unstable, dynamic uh, motion, uh, and spin involves both rolling and yawing. So when an aircraft enters a spin, uh, it would have to then try to recover from that spin before the whole motion becomes completely unstable. So in this case, the pilot would need to use both aileron and rudder um, to go against the spin motion.